Hey guys, this video is part one of a two-part series on changing the rig on our Oyster 485. You can see it behind us. We did the entire rig, the sails, and the running rigging. And the reason these videos are so long is because it was eight hours of footage that we had to cut down to about an hour. And I'm putting it out in two pieces so it's easily digestible. You might want to save these uh, in, a, in a save list because I've got them chaptered out and they're going to be really good information for you guys later on. So this video and the next video, I'll, I'll title them part one and part two, and please save those. Like I said, these are eight hours of footage. It was a ton of work. Uh, if you guys got something from this video, consider be becoming a patron of ours. We love every single one of our patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting these videos. Now, I also have to explain that I didn't put a lot of music behind this because it's not really that kind of video. This video is a reference video. It's an informational video. It, you'll learn something in this video, and I, I really think music is going to detract from that. So, without further ado, here it is. So we got new, look, look, we got new rigging. We got new sails. <laughs> we got a, a very happy poof on the front of the boat. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm so excited I got my new sails, our training sails. We call them the sacrificial sails that came with the boat. They needed to be replaced anyway, but we decided to wait after we'd learned to sail. We did tear two sets of the sacrificial sails up, but now I think we're confident and we're ready for our official good sailing or cruising sails. This is my new sail. It's so exciting. It's orange. Bright orange. My favorite color. Look at that. Oh, it's bright orange. Oh, look at that. All right, let's get this thing up. I got prison jumpsuit orange. <laughs> Vibrant. <laughs> is this? Oh, it is. It's sunbrella, isn't it? Wow. That's amazing. Oh, it's nice and crispy. Nice. Come on. Everybody in the club getting crisp. Uh, Let me slide the whole thing backwards. Hold on. So, pretty sail, but uh, we got a problem. This is structural. This pin here is structural to this whole structure, so we can't get the pin out to put the back of the sail on it. So we need a saw shackle. Unfortunately, we don't have any Dyneema small enough to make a saw shackle, but we have a sailor buddy with a saw shackle. Laying in the Jeep. <laughs> so, thank you very much, man. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you got a little piece of Sean on your boat. <laughs> Oh, you should see what I left on your boat. Oh boy. All right, like I said in the first video, uh, this is the outhaul car. That was $2,800. So we're putting it back on. He's stuffing the balls in there. One ball at a time. You don't lose the balls. I'm not losing them. Use the little thing. I'm not used to using playing with balls this small. Oh God. <laughs> For you guys that don't know, this is the outhaul car. So what it does is on a furling mainsail, you have to have a car on the bottom to control the clue of the sail, which is the aft corner coming out. So that's the clue, that's the clue. You pull that out and that car controls it. The car slides all along this track, but it slides on these little balls. And when it ripped out, these things broke, both these, these end pieces broke, and it just balls everywhere. Okay. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh are you oh. licking it? <laughs> <laughs> if you lick it, you can get it in and out of the wrong hole. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so now we're going to put the sheaves in. This is a sheave. It's the part. This is actually a bad one. So we're going to move this one to the topping lift because the topping lift doesn't need to roll much. Um, this, yeah. is, this is why your sheet went bad. It cut it. So this is this is this needs to be replaced, but the ones that we found didn't fit. So um, sometimes have to you make just do. gotta use what you gotta use. Over yonder. All 
All right, so the boom is made out of aluminum and you can see some of the oxidization here. This is what happens. This is this is all grit paint and it, this is what aluminum does. It oxides and that's actually one of the good parts about it because if you don't paint it, then you can scratch it and it'll just oxide and you don't have to worry about it. But if you do paint it, it'll oxide under the paint and then you got to paint it every once in a while, strip it all, blast it or whatever you want to do and then prep it and paint it. So point being, this is Lanacoat. You can either use this or Tef Gel. Tef Gel lasts longer. So Lanacoat will be fine for these, but if it's something that's always moving, like the rigging, you want to use Tef Gel. Tef Gel is something, or Lanacoat, is something that you use for dissimilar metals because the stainless steel is a more noble metal and it'll make the aluminum oxidize even more and then it'll eventually just weld it together. I'm sure you guys have all seen that happen. So this will be something that we can do to keep the from happening. Basically you just take some and put it on the threads. That's that's all you need really. Just a little bit like that. Uh -huh. Is enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And it'll I would have gone a whole lot more. Yeah, it doesn't really need that. Okay, the boys are uh, way way ahead of me. There's they're like four steps ahead of me. They're they've already put together the um, outhaul line, the new outhaul line. This one's cool, it's different than mine. It's got a stopper. So this stopper stops the track and uh, keeps it out away from the sail. They, they put two of these on it just in case. Uh, this is just to keep it from the, the clue hitting this and cutting the line. Nice to have it. And then um, we're, gonna, we're gonna show you how to tie these little chaser lines on. This is a mousing line, we call it in sailing. And basically what you want to do is put it here, per, per, um, per, parallel to it, and then wrap some tape around it and then fold it back over and wrap some more tape around it. That way it's pulling on the tape and not the just one wrapping. You understand? So you take it like this. Just wrap it a couple times. You don't need to go crazy because it's going to be the strength of the of the tape will be well then okay so you can wrap it back over and then do a couple more wraps all right so that should be fine give her a good tug oh yeah she's not going anywhere okay so okay check this out this is one of the things that we're doing a uh, big thing too we're, we're replacing some of the running rigging so this is the old staysail halyard this is the old jib halyard. We, we oh, uh, I'm sorry, this is the new one, and we've already replaced it. So I'm going to show you guys how to replace halyards. Uh, for halyards, you want to use Dyneema if you can. If you can afford it, that's the way to go. So this one, as you can see, goes all the way up the mast and comes out. Well, actually, it's kind of wrapped around right now, but it, it, it comes out, and it's, it's the halyard for this stay. So it's not used very often, but this is an old, old line. You can tell it's old when you bend it and it doesn't bend back, you know? Whereas the new lines, when you bend them, they bend back. This is a new line. And this is called warp speed. This is a real nice line. Uh, normally we would, we would splice these, but we don't have the right fids right now. So I've just whipped the ends like this. Okay, so we will go over how to whip in another video. But right now we're going to go over how exactly to tie these onto each other so they come up and down easily and you don't lose the line halfway and have to go up the mass and feed it in and it's just a big pain in the ass. Uh, don't use electrical tape. We're going to sew it. So come with me, I'll show you. Okay, we're going to start with the lower end. We've got these um, really nice toggle hooks. So these things are about $300 a piece. We don't want to have to replace these. We're, we're just going to recondition them. But you grab on and open it up like that. Okay, there we go. So what we're going to do, um, this, this is not a really good splice. This will not hold your sail forever. But what we want to do is cut this off. So we're going to cut this off on the teak. Don't, do not cut the teak. I'll cut you. Okay, so as you can see inside this thing, it's red. That means it's Dyneema inside. So that's the right, the right line to use for this halyard. It's just, it's just old. So we're changing it out because this stuff is pretty old. Okay, this will be the new stuff. So we're gonna take this end 
and we're gonna sew on this end, I think this end. Yeah, this end. Let's slide this into there. We want about six feet of it. And then we take it through and we, you know what, if we work this out, and it should be a little easier to work with here. Yeah. Go through, make a loop, make another loop at the bottom. Come on. And then we'll just go through one more time. And over. That way when we pull this all through, it'll make a knot. Yeah. Okay. There's our knot. And then we just start sewing through the end of this one. And then one more one more through it. And put the loop over and then pull tight. That's it. Now we can cut it off and it's on there good. Nice and easy. And when it gets up to the top, remember it might get snagged. So so nice and, nice and easy. Yep. Now it should go right through there. Boom, done. Okay, so now you take the knife and you cut off the old one. Just cut these away? Here you go. Yep, just cut those away. There you go. And now pull it down. Pull it all the way through now. Mm hmm. Okay, how you're not. You go in, you go around, around twice. One, two, and then you go up through and then what you get is a knot where it's a slip knot so this part of the knot you can get nice and even just a little bit of tail you don't need too much tail on this thing and just like that right and then and then when you pull this down this will become super, super tight on top of that, okay? So that's the halyard knot. That's what it looks like. And then once you get this tight, it is not coming out. You have to cut this knot off. But you can either use this or you can use a splice. If you don't have the right fids or you can't do the splice, just use this, it's fine. Whip the end, burn it, burn it as much as you can. The Dyneema doesn't melt, so uh, just burn the outside of the, of the poly line. And then make, make sure it looks nice. That's, that's all you need. It doesn't get in the way. It, this won't get in the way of anything, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to whip, and then we're gonna whip the end of these lines and, and tie a halyard knot on it for now, and then when, when, it, when we get to my boat, we'll use the Selma fids and we'll, we'll splice them correctly. So you take about six feet of line. This is whipping line, this is um, Rob line whipping line. I like to go up through the line Pull it until it's almost through. Go back through, same side. Pull it until you have a loop. See, so I got my loop here. Come back up, make another loop on the bottom. It's kind of getting messy, isn't it? There we go. There we go. And then one more time back through. And fold your loop into that one. And then pull tight. Yeah. So that will make a very nice knot. Okay, and then we can take this needle off of the of the line just for a minute. Fold this over and start our whipping. 
you just want to get them real tight and once you've got enough going over this line we can cut this line off okay so now we can keep whipping it down you want it to go about the same length as the diameter of the line so you yeah, are probably good right there now thread the needle again cool part about this line is it's a little waxy so if you smash it it'll get flat thread the needle oops We're going to go right through the side, right next to the whip. This is where a sailor's palm comes in, a sewing palm, I mean, oops, comes in handy. And we're going to come out the other side, okay? Boom. Now we could be a little more sloppy with it. We're going to go right down inside right out the other side <laughs> what I'm reading your comments are they funny people like it <laughs> and I like to do two so so this is what this looks like now. It's got like a one little thing here and one on the other side. I, I like to double those up. It's not that hard and take that long and it looks more pretty. Oops. Make sure you don't loop it over. Okay, now this one, we're gonna go 90 degrees. We're gonna have it come out at 90 degrees on the other side of this, watch. So instead of going straight through, we're going to go turn the thing. Have it come up up there. And then it'll go through here. Come out. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's a little off, but whatever. Oh, see how this one came out in between? You definitely don't want it to come out in between. So back off and come out again. It's pretty easy with this Dyneema stuff. The Dyneema is so slippery that you can really make it nice. And then to, to end this, we just do a knot. Whoops. It's pretty easy to end it. We can just do the same thing. Just go back and forth a couple of times and put it through the loop. Since this will be temporary on our bow, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, that's that. I'm gonna cut this off. And there we go. Now we can cut and dress the end of it, okay? But that's the whole thing. Looks nice, yeah? So I'm thinking this is the motor. This is the wire that goes into the motor. So if we take off either this piece or this piece, the whole thing should come off and just lay down. And then we can take off this um, pin and take off all these things and then take off this side and this side and then we can access the actual um the turnbuckle once we lift up the entire thing so this is how most of these um harken furlers even electric or manual are built they have two pieces holding the the thing up at the right level which are these two pieces and then the whole thing will move as one unit when you get that off. The only, the only difference now is we have uh, a cable going in there, and there's no there's no plug for the cable in here, or in here, or so here. This is, I, I think it's a gear that t that touches that. You just it needs. To sure. I think we just have to take the whole motor off and put it on the deck. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, just just as I thought, bad. just as I thought. Okay, cool, yeah. Well, okay, this John. needed to be changed anyway. You see how old and nasty this grease is? Yeah. Uh, we need to get some bearing grease. Okay. And we need to get some, here, I need some um, paper towels, please. Gotcha. Paper towels. Yep. Okay, this time, John, I want you to, I'm not gonna ask you to take it back, so go ahead and take the slack out of it. All right, put it in the winch and let's go re nice and slow, okay? Okay, it's coming off. You got that piece? Yep. Okay, pulling this out. Okay, Johnny. Johnny on the spot, not in the right spot. Let's get that, uh, let's get that up a little bit. You can let that go. Okay, you got the clutch on? Yeah, keep, keep going up. Slowly. Stop, stop. stop. Okay, keep going. I'm trying not to drop anything into the water, like I notorious, no, no, like John. Uh, it's James. still too tight here. I think one of us needs to go up the mast to check on the top. Okay. And see if there's any any way we can get a little bit more. We need like another inch. Another inch. So why don't you get the it's bosun's chair? It's all about chair. another inch, isn't it? <laughs> get the bosun's chair and then. Um, I'm gonna send you the top of the mass and you're gonna check it out and see if we no! can. No! You can't send me up there! Okay, if you're watching this... Oh my god, I just got shit on! <laughs> oh. Don't lick it! Don't lick it! He got me right in the hand! That's what you deserve, Dad! Oh. Okay, well, if you're watching this, I'm gonna do a poll on... Should Mario put an arch on his oyster? I have a windmill. So if you're watching this video, please go to the poll and let me know. Vote on the poll. It's so I'm going to use these snatch blocks. Oh, is that what these are called? <laughs> Ew. Snatch? <laughs> oh. Okay, Dad, you want to go? I'm going to use these blocks to uh, route this line from here back over here and to the power winch because I'm lazy. So it's coming out of here. It's coming down. It's going through this block, it's going over there to that block, it's going over there to that block, and then it's going back to the sheave, and then it'll go up into the switch. So we're good. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Oh. <laughs> so let's, let's watch him untie this knot. It won't. Use your strength. I'm using my strength, bitch! Use your... Come on, be a man. I'll be in the car. Do it. This thing is stuck. <laughs> you gotta push on that end. Don't push on that end. Don't tell him to push. Watch out. Let go. I'm letting go. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna show you guys how to properly remove these pins so you can get them out and reuse them. So, you take one side and you bend it a little bit. Take the other side, bend it a little bit. Try to get them as bent as you can. They have to be more than 90 degrees. Okay, and then we take this tool. Good, good pair of channel locks would work better, but these are what we have right now. And then we grab oh, both of them. Oh, you want me to hold the little pan? There yeah, we, go. we grab both of them and bend them back together. And then get it a little tighter and bend them the rest of the way. Make sure they don't try to bend them right together like that, okay? Oh, and look at that, it popped right out. Oh, you gotta pull the blue one up. No. Pull this on. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, oh, it's out, it's out. Okay, stop. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Use your strength. I'm using my strength. Let me think about this. So I... we need to get the black thing off. So what we gotta do yeah. is we gotta lift the red thing so that it's holding the weight and then we're gonna slide the black thing off. Yep. How many more do you want? Need... Okay. Okay, now take that, take that stay. Take it, John. Take yeah, I got it. Yeah, you got it? I'm holding it, yeah. Okay. I just need him to let go. Alright, 
Going up the mast. Keep it on. Bye, Yeah, of course we have to freaking take it out on this side. <laughs> this is always how it works. A little bit, a little bit higher. Okay, give me some slack on the blue line. So we're tying a rolling hitch onto this. Okay, I gotta change this because now we're doing the pin. So I, I need to get this pin out right here inside there. So I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this out and then use the uh, cutoff tool just to cut it and then pull it out. It'll be easier just to cut it. So listen, listen, the blue line's long enough and the red line's not. So as soon as we get it over the boat, we need to untie the red line. So that's yes. your job, Mario. Okay, Jake, yeah. you want to run on the dock? Yeah. You got it. You got that from there? I'm good. Okay, go ahead and start lowering it down. Better. That's much smoother. Thank you. Oh, wow. You walk that way, I'm going to keep walking up. All right, so the way that this works is we're going to line this up, figure out how far this line goes inside this thing. So we're going to use this. Goes in that far. Okay? Goes in that far. So that far, line this up with this one. It's about the same. And then right there is where we need our mark. Okay. Okay, so one and a half times the diameter is like one and a half times. Like down to there. That'll be there. Now, can you explain to the... I didn't get that very good. Can you explain so what you, you just did? You do, you measure out one and a half times the wire diameter, right? So this plus this minus half, right? So it's like about that far. And then you make a mark and then we push this on there. To one and a half times the diameter. Okay, gotcha. Right to there. Make it look pretty. See, it's coming back. Now we gotta make sure it doesn't push that up. You're not gonna see it. My bad. Okay. This is gonna be tough. Holy shit, how do you get it? So, actually, this is the reason we're doing this. This one has a fracture right here. You can feel it with your, um, you can, you can kind of see it. I, I bet yeah. you yeah. it's right there. You see it? It's, um, it's cracked all the way down. 